couple years down the road, um, you're kind of lost. You're um, a little aimless, drifting, if you will. Man. You've been through, you had a, a rough stretch. You were, you were dating somebody that you really cared a lot about. Yeah. And, um, you know, people grow apart as they do. And you guys were together for two years and, oh. uh, it was great. You know, it was really, it started out sort of as like a relationship of convenience where, you know, the two of you had like a similar schedule and you like the same stuff and you just kind of naturally gravitated towards each other and were pretty instantly comfortable with one another. Um, What's her name? Her name is uh, Margo. Okay. Margo. Uh, Stucky. Margo Stucky. Yeah. Margo um, was a bartender. He was a bartender down on 6th Street. Came to the Valve a few times. Uh, you guys, you know, hit it off. On slower nights, she'd pop by. You know, you guys would hang out, chat for a little bit. Um, just kind of slowly. It was a slow burn. You know, and eventually one night, you guys, uh, you were like closing up shop just as she was getting there. And she's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm heading home. And you just kind of naturally are like, oh, well, you want to go, you want to go hang out, you want to get something to eat, whatever. Yeah. And it just sort of became a thing. You know, it was very natural and it, it evolved from like a place of friendship. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it like a whirlwind romance. Although on the day that she left you, she met you uh she met you on Congress Bridge with a box of some of your stuff. Whoa. And you felt you felt the you felt the breeze whip over the water, hit you in the face as you looked over the side. And she handed you your box and she says, You know, Pat, you sure did put my wind in a whirl. Oops. What? But people just grow apart. And she goes, I'll never forget you. She hands you a box of your stuff. Yeah. There's a few comic books, phone charger, pens, notebooks, a couple pairs of white boxers with red hearts on them. Got them back. And you almost wish you hadn't because uh, they are streaked up. Oh, man. And they're right on top to where it's like very evident, you know, she knew about it, you know. What? Damn it. So point being, you're you're in like a, a tough spot where you're. You're not even transitioning to this next phase of your life yet. You're still remembering the old one. You're kind of you're kind of stuck in place, you know. Yeah, sure. So you. uh, <clears throat> It's a Sunday night. You need to go to the grocery store. Um, you decide you're going to walk. It's a nice evening. The sun is setting. You put uh, your headphones on. And you're going to walk to the grocery store around the corner. Okay. It's um. You moved and you still live in Austin. You live over near a little deli. The the pizza place. Yeah. There, there's like that little grocery store right there. I think it's called like Ar Arlen's or Harlan. Oh, I think it's yeah. Arlen's. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it is yeah a legendary uh bad store. There is like nothing in there that I recognize. Yeah. So you, but you know, it's like around the corner. I like right? that area and though. It's a great area. I used to live there years ago. It's a wonderful spot. Little Deli is great. Mm -hmm. But that's like your neighborhood grocer, right? So you eat, like I said, you walk out, sun's going down. You got a couple reusable bags in your hands. You're just going to go pick up a few things and walk home. That grocery store never looks like there's anyone, anybody 
like any more than like two people in it at yeah. any time. Yeah. It is con like I've never been in there with. I don't think I've ever gone in there and there's been another person checking out. It's a strange you know? place. It's actually it's a ghost. A it's a ghost town. Yeah. So like you walk in again, Sunday. It's a little later in the day. You walk in. It's kind of a dark place. It's like it's like not it's, well lit. You know. It's a. I cannot stress enough how almost unsettling this place is in real life. It's almost like it's running on generators. Like that's <laughs> you know the, yeah, whole, yeah. the whole vibe of it, right? So you walk in and it kind of looks like that. You don't really think anything of it. You uh, you know, again, you're you're just kind of zoned out. You're just like finding space where you can do something that doesn't make you think about her. Yeah. So you're walking up and down the aisles, you're filling your bag, you're listening to music. Just like trying to escape. What am I listening you get about to? like uh you're listening to a uh it's a compilation called Fuck Rock. And it's just like <laughs> it's just like uh it's like the music to like um the soundtrack of like men with goatees having sex and like oh, the man. aughts. Yeah. You know, like uh Kinder. Yeah. And like Chave Chevelle. Yeah. You know, it's like okay. that, right? Oh man. Why am I listening, listening to that? Listening to... You're just in a weird place, man. I fucking I'll fucking you know, you're Jesus. in a weird fucking place, right? I'm in this weird off-putting Lynchian grocery store listening to that kind of music. That is not good. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. You you feel the uh weight of the brass knuckles in your pocket as it bounces against your thigh. <laughs> You're just carrying around a set of brass knuckles now for safety. Okay. So you fill up your bags, right? You get like through like the second aisle down, not a very big store. You look and there's nobody at the registers. Like there's like uh there's like an office in the back. There's no light on in the hallway. You know, it looks like it's like where the fuck is a yeah. any anyone else, you no know? One. Yeah, okay. You think whatever, maybe maybe somebody's in the bathroom or they're in the office counting a drawer or something. You don't know. So you okay. just kind of like is there like a self checkout? No. Oh no. Arlen's will not invest in a self checkout. Really? Several people have come and asked. <laughs> and a couple of those people have not been heard from since. What the fuck? There was one guy, his name was uh Ricardo Flavors, <laughs> and he he was a uh, self checkout salesman. Okay. He went in there and uh, he wore like a suit and tie. He had a little like hat on, you know. And uh, he's a real fast talker. He said, "Hey, I see there's no self checkouts here." He goes, "Can I talk to the head man?" You know. And yeah. the people at Harlan's kind of like like the two there were two cashiers on duty, and they looked at each other and they're like, "Yeah, he's in the back. Come with us." And they never, nobody saw Ricardo Flavors ever again from that point. Did anyone ever come looking for him? I mean, I would like to say yes, but not really. Like, he was kind of like a a loner. He lived for the job. Yeah. You know, he didn't really have like a, I mean, he was on the road a lot. He's a traveling salesman, you know, didn't okay, really have like yeah. a home base or like a family. So there was just no. To come back to. So it's just the unsolved case of Ricardo Flavors. Yeah. Fuck. There was a GoFundMe put together, but like that, it was just like, hey, people are like, they're like help us find Ricardo Flavors, you know, and they showed him <laughs> every picture was like him posing with a self checkout machine. <laughs> right. There was like him like standing to the side, like pointing down. There were a couple of them where he was like around back and he had like his arm wrapped around like the light pole that flashed like green at the top. If it was an open lane, you know, he had like his arm <laughs> around it. Right. <laughs> there was one where he had his hand, like he had like his fingers, like stuck through like the metal prong where like the bags would get held. 
and he was just like running his fingers through the open slot. Jeez. What the okay. Is a visibly erect. They Why would they include that photo? They didn't mean to. They there they took the the person putting it together took all the photos, right? And uh they were they were like sending them to like uh whoever was designing the thing, you know? Okay. And they just they're like, here, use all these. And the person was like, okay. And they just put it, they just oh, uploaded okay. what they were given, you know? Whatever it is. But there was one where he was like looking intently at this checkout, this self-checkout with his fingers in the rail of that bag holder. Rock hard. Yeah, rock hard. He's leaning down, his breath is fogging up the glass on the <laughs> scanner. The you know? <laughs> So point being, like, yeah, there's no self checkout at Arlen's. Okay. Okay. I know better to ask. Yeah, but still, you're like, well, somebody should be here again. Not a weird place. You just kind of keep walking around. You don't really think anything of it. You get back to the other end of the store by the freezer section, and you hear like, you hear like people talking. Like it sounds like it sounds like friends just kind of hanging out, shooting the shit. You know, I wouldn't it, just like a casual conversation between pals. Okay. Kind of like what the fuck, right? It's like a like a dark store. You look down, there's like a beam of light coming out from the bottom of the end cap that is at the very end of the freezer section. Okay. You can see like a shadow move in front of it. It gets stretched out onto the floor in front of you. What do you do? I think I would say, uh, excuse me. You would like look down at the floor at the light and say, excuse me. Yeah. I'd be like, Hey, like fellows, like I'll try to get their attention. So it's again, it's like on the ground, but I thought you said I heard like voices. Yeah, you do. So you, you like look down, you're like, excuse me. You hear somebody go, shut up. And the light, you hear like a click and the light gets clicked off. Again, it's it's like from the bottom of the end cap, you see just like a sliver of light that just gets sh- shut off. What do you do? I guess I just go whatever and I just walk away. I just chalk it up to the weirdness of this fucking grocery store. And I just try to find someone else. I just try not to think about it. So you leave the still small voices at the bottom of the end cap at the end of the freezer section. I think that's kind of fucking weird, you know? Yeah, Yeah, it's a little weird. So you continue to go through the store, right? You're picking stuff out. You're filling up your bag. You go to the checkout. You put all your shit on the conveyor belt. You don't see anybody. You kind of like go and press your face up to the the window that leads into the hallway by the office, nothing. It's pitch black in there. Okay, I walk back to where I saw that sliver of light, and I just go, I just go investigate, I guess. So you, uh, again, no it's coming here. out of the end cap, at the very bottom of this, at the base of this end cap. Like, you know how it's, they're, they're made of like, um, it's just like metal plates, you know? Mm-hmm. That just get like locked into place or whatever. It's just metal shelving. There's little holes you can see into it. You know, you can like, there's like a space back there. So you come back, you see, you like walk towards that section. Yeah. And as you walk back there, you do see that sliver of light again, illuminating a very thin strip of tile. Right at the bottom of that end cap. What do you do? I walk over and I kneel down and I go, Yeah. Hey guys, look, um, I heard you talking earlier. I heard you talking just now. I know you're there. I just got out of a two year relationship and I just need to pay for my stuff. Uh I I just I need I need some help, please. So you uh you kind of see like movement through the shelving like you see you're like kneeled down looking at like ground level you see shadows kind of scatter across the floor you can't make it out because like again you can only see through like these little tiny holes yeah so um 
but there is like like you see like the little notch where the the shelf gets like hooked into the frame of this end cap so you do see where you could like take the shelf off and look in or would you just kind of keep looking through the little holes? No, I just I just look through the holes, and, and if I don't get this figured out pretty quickly, I'll probably just leave. I mean, there's an HCB like a th three minute drive from where Little Deli is. So you look through the holes. You don't really see a whole lot. You go, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah. You go to kneel up, and then you hear a voice say, "I've been there, man." He said, "Things will get better. Don't worry." What? Yeah, you kind of go, what? You uh, you lean down, you peer into the holes on these metal sheets that make up this end cap. And you see like like dust bunnies. And they're like moving around across the floor. There's like four or five of them. And there's one that kind of like moves in your direction. And it says yeah, I was with my girl for 18 months. Uh, what? He goes, best time of my life. He goes, I think about her every day. He goes, you know what gets me through? The other dust bunnies kind of like come up and like sort of like <laughs> surround him a little bit. He goes, he goes, these guys, my friends. He's like, you got to rely on the people around you, Pat. All right, so yeah, so I just go to the HCB. I think this is too much. This is too much. So you, uh, you go I'm to so like, emotionally you, raw right now, and now I'm talking you, to these dust bunnies. I would feel like I was going crazy. You kind of, you kind of think that you go to stand up, and he's like, "You're not going crazy, man." He's like, "There's, there's room in spaces like ours for you." He goes, "Do you want to?" Come in and talk about it. You hear like the scrape of a chair against the floor. He goes, got a place for you to sit and everything. <laughs> oh, man. He's like, if you're coming in, uh, he goes, could you grab a bag of uh, Cool Ranch Doritos? I do love Cool Ranch. Yeah, fuck it. I guess I probably would want to talk. He's like, okay. He, uh, so you stand up, you go grab, There's you go to the chip aisle, and there's like a bag of Cool Ranch, and then there's like a party size bag. So you go to reach for the first bag, and you go, this isn't going to do. No. And then you grab for the party size bag. <laughs> you pull it off the shelf. You grab a case of Diet Coke. And you go back to the end cap. You kneel down again, and you're like, how do I get in? And you hear a clang. A shelf falls off. And he goes, come on in, Pat. And you look, and you could shimmy right in there. Whoa. You see a small, like, a, you see like a, almost like a matchstick, sort of like lighting up the floor. Hmm. You go in. Mm -hmm. You kind of lean at the precipice of the uh, the opening at the end cap, and you look down. When you like break the plane and look down, it looks like it's so far below you, right? Yeah. Like it looks like it looks like the floor is like sixty feet beneath you. You see a little dust bunny kind of like walk up to the edge, and he's like, "Toss her down." You grab your bag of chips, you drop yeah. it down, it falls, they catch it. I got some diet you throw coke. The, too. Uh, you throw the diet coke. He's like, "Oh no!" And it just smushes him, you know. Oh, right. And uh, and somebody goes, "God." Damn it, Bob! They come over. They uh, they they move the they move the diet coke. They fluff Bob back up. <laughs> and they're like, "Ah, good as new." And they go, "You were ugly anyway." So they kind of stand there, fifty feet down from you, and they're like, "Jump!" And you jump, and you yeah. land into the, the soft pile of dust bunnies. You leave a pat-sized impression and pat-shaped impression in the mass of them. Wow. They get up and kind of shake it out. And you're standing in the space between the aisles. 
And uh, you look back up, and the cavernous opening at the top, it looks huge now. But you're you're about the same size as the rest of these dust bunnies, you know? Okay, yeah, I was going to ask. So, like, relative to me, they're, like, the same, they're Yeah, you're large. pretty, you're probably, like, you're probably the biggest person there, but they're they're all fairly similar mm-hmm. in uh, size, shape, stature. You know, they're, they're all within an, a, a normal range of, like, a human being. But you're clearly, like, bigger and stronger than everybody there because you're obviously made out of flesh and bone. So they, uh, one of them walks up to you and he goes, Hey, he goes, uh, my name's Charlie. Nice to meet you. You see like a hand come out. It's made out of dust. You shake it. Yeah. You shake his hand, you squeeze. It just like disintegrates and you're like, Oh, my bad. And he kind of shakes it. He goes, don't worry. He goes all, he goes, it's uh, the curse of the first timer. And everybody kind of laughs, you know? He pulls a. Uh, I would think I would go, Bob. This is Bob I'm talking to, or who do I know? This is Charlie. I go, Charlie. Could you tell me what's going on? He's like, Yeah, man. He goes, This is the this is the space between the aisles. It's where we chill. It's where we hang out. You know, this is uh, it's where we live. But you're a dust bunny. He's like, Yeah. This is where we. This is where we are. This is this is my house, man. He goes, he's like, well, it's not only my house. He goes, this is our, our, you know, our community, our collective. We all live here. You but know, how did you guys come to be? How did you get sentience? He's like, well, you know, uh, when dust collects, it gets swept around and, you know, it just winds, winds up finding a way. Dust finds a way. Dust always finds a way. Okay. Um, so you, so you weren't like, and they all chant, they all go, dust finds a way. Oh, no. Uh, so you, but you, you're saying that you weren't like humans who were turned into dust bunnies. He laughs. He goes, "Pat, we're dust bunnies." Okay, I was just, you know, it's just a little. It's a little. This isn't like the norm for me, so it's a little. Plus, the you know the the two year relationship thing. I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, but he he kind of like walks over to a little mini fridge. He puts the cokes in the mini fridge. He uh he opens. He goes hummus. Yeah. Please. He pulls it out. He's got hummus. He's got some celery. He's got little carrots. He pours you uh, one of those Diet Cokes, throws a couple ice cubes in your glass. He gestures for you to sit at the chair that he told you about earlier, pulls a little table up to the side, puts your snack on the table, and he stands there. He goes, two years is a long time, man. (laughs) Yeah, too. He's, a he's like, I, buddy. yeah. He's yeah. like, I get it. I feel you. He's like, well, you know, like I said before, the best thing you can do is be with the people that you love, be with those that you care about. And you know, if if you're looking for a community of like-minded people that have experienced the same thing, he goes, you may have just found it. You dip uh, that celery into the hummus. And it is the best hummus that you've ever fucking had. The celery crunches when you bite it. Okay. Snaps. It's the juiciest celery you can remember. Charlie goes... Part of one of the perks of being at a grocery store. All the fresh hummus you can eat. Everybody kind of laughs. laughs. Okay. So they go, Charlie's like, you know, maybe our relationship could be mutual and beneficial. What do you mean? He's like, I mean, like, you can come down here for fellowship and friendship and all the hummus and celery you can eat uh, whenever you want. We're never going to judge you. We'll always be your friend. We're always here to listen. Okay. He goes, and when you come, maybe you bring us like, um, I don't know, like a television. Or, you know, like a, like a laptop. And then one guy's like, yeah, a laptop. And another one goes, uh, Alex, if we get a laptop, you are not allowed to use it unsupervised again. Uh, I have a Chromebook that, I've, uh, that I'm not using. They were like, Pat, that would be a game changer. 
I got it for free. He was like, you know what? If you could do that for us, he said, we'd be eternally grateful. And he's like, of course, we understand, you know, it, 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 it's not the easiest thing to sneak in. You know, it's, it's it, you know, but you're here now. Like, so. Hey, where is everybody, by the way? It's like, oh, the store's closed. Well, I got in. I was like shopping and stuff. They're like, yeah, they don't lock it up sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Well, that answers that, I guess. All right, man. Yeah, this, this, you know what? I, I can't be certain that I haven't completely lost my mind, but I'm just going to go with it. Sure. I'll help. If I'm crazy, I'm crazy. And if I'm not, then at least this is an adventure. So you, uh, they have like a little grappling hook. They shoot it up to the top of the, the top of the, the hole. Okay. You ascend. You get out. You're back to normal size. You, uh, <clears throat> you collect all your groceries from the counter. You just take them, right? You just take them. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't like anything crazy, but you know, you just take them. You're like, I'll come back and give them money at some point. So you go home, you see that extra Chromebook sitting on a shelf do you take it back yeah fuck it i may as well so do you it get now your car because, this time yeah, the door's unlocked yeah i don't know when i have this opportunity again so. so so you get in your car you speed over to arlen's right you walk back you see that they've still got the shelf open you hold that chromebook in your hand you duck down and you slide in and you go guys i got it and you drop the chromebook down they catch it Again, they catch you, shake your impression out of their brushed forms. They plug it in. They've got a they've got like a line into the electricity. You know, it's like on the back side of like the refrigerator case. So they could they could access it. Wow. They're online, right? They're all like looking at the internet, you know, they're using a, using the computer. And uh Charlie comes up to you and he's like, Pat. He goes, thank you, man, so much. He's like, we can't, we can't tell you how much we appreciate this. Well, yeah, man, we're friends now. He's, he's like, our door's always open anytime. He goes, they normally don't lock up on Sunday. He goes, it's, it's this one woman. Her name's Janice. She does a terrible job. Janice. Uh, Janice. She uh, is not very good. She just smokes the whole time. She's like behind the register. She's just like puffing. <laughs> She's ripping She's darts smoking? the whole time. Yeah. That's weird. All right. They're like, so Sunday nights, we're free. If you're free, come hang out. And he's he's like, you know, next time if you come, uh, it's like maybe like a. He's like, I don't know. Uh, maybe if you have like if you have like a blender, maybe some kitchen equipment. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, if you bring me a microwave, he goes, I'll cook dinner for you. you. Come over, we'll cook. We'll put the game on the computer. Let me ask you something. Uh, what do you need? The, well, uh, the, the internet and the, the computer, I understand. What do you need the like a blender for? Not he's like, uh, we're going to, he's like, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to make up, uh, we're going to make some margs for the boys. But you guys eat and drink and stuff? And he points over to just a fucking fat dust bunny. He goes, he goes, some of us more than others. And this fat dust bunny like struggles to like, like, you know, he's like, he's currently eating. There's like crumbs of like a cheese it and it's where its <laughs> mouth would be, you know? All right. And uh and you see it like lick its lips kind of, and everybody just laughs and they go, Oh, Ralph, you fat fuck. And they all just like bust on him, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I I just I don't really get your natures yet. I guess so. Sorry if that's was like, a weird question. He's like, no, man. He goes, we understand. This is a new friendship. He goes, we don't get all your quirks either. Like what? He uh, he's like, you farted in here one time. Yeah, and you did. <laughs> to be fair, you you farted oh, no. inside one right. time, and and they're like, that smell. I've never smelled that before in my entire life. They go, it might have been, we all discussed, like, not having you back because of it, but, Jeez. you know, we're trying to be open-minded. So here's what I do. I go, 
I go into, I mean, I mean the, the grocery store probably sells some of that stuff, right? They, I would just steal the blender from there. So you grab like you, uh, you grab a blender, you grab a toaster, right? Yeah. I just grab you a bunch of stuff, grab a bunch of stuff. You start, you start just pushing it through the hole, right? Regardless of how big it was, it like manages to fit. As soon as it like breaks the plane, it just shrinks down to their size and it fits. Yeah. So you're just standing out there, right? You've got like a little Weber grill you push down there, bags of charcoal, lighter fluid. <laughs> you grab a bunch of T-bones from the meat counter, oh. you know, right? So you're like loading them up. And they're just happy as can be. You dive in. Everybody's like, Pat, Pat, Pat. They all put, you know, like get you, they get, get you up on their shoulders, you know, they parade Holy you shit. around. They're like, Pat, this is the best thing that's ever fucking happened to us. They're like, are you kidding me? They're like, you, they're like, you are an official dust bunny. And they kind of like, Fuck you yeah. get down on one knee and they like knight you with a sword <laughs> made out of dust. Right. All right. That's cool. Do I get a sword? You, you, uh, you go grab some like little cocktail swords, you know? Oh, like, sure. For, like, yeah. They, they were for like fruit. And uh, you throw a pack down there, and everybody gets a sword. <laughs> and you guys all like raise your swords in the light of a single matchstick in between the shelves at Arlen's Market. And you say, Thank you, my brothers. <laughs> you say, uh, To honor and prosperity. And they all say, To honor and prosperity. And yeah. you guys throw a fucking party. I bet. Right. You got the game on the computer, right? You're grilling up steaks. They're making margaritas. Which game are we watching? You're watching. Uh, it is the Houston Texans versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a it's a prime time game. This is uh the third week of the season, and they're calling it the. They say, is this a potential playoff matchup? We'll see tonight as two of the best teams in the division go head to head on ESPN. And then you yeah. lose the game. I think I would just like revel in how bizarre my life has become in the past like few yeah. hours. Yeah, you're hanging out with these guys, you're having fun, right? Your time uh, you know, you get a little sleepy. You're like, guys, I gotta get out of here. They're you're like, but I will come back. They're like, I'll see you next Sunday. Yeah. That whole week is like the best week you've had in a long time. You haven't felt this good since you can remember. And you keep looking forward to Sunday, right? Praying that that door is not going to be locked. You leave your house, headphones in. You like speed walk. Basically, you know, you're like, you, I got to get there. You show up at the same time, the door slides open. I think I would like bring some good, some goodies with me as a surprise. What do you bring? I bring some gummy bears for sure. Um, I probably grab some more Diet Coke. Yeah. Yeah. Gummy bears and Diet Coke. You grab some gummy bears, you grab some Diet Coke, you know, you get a bring your fucking vape pen you bring an eighth of weed <laughs> you bring a little pipe yeah so you guys just get fucking ripped Isn't right so strange yeah you're uh you're watching the game game's pretty out of hand by fourth quarter this is the next week and you're just kind of like at the point where like, okay, this game isn't worth watching anymore. And the kind of like things are starting to wind down. Okay. And then you hear a shrill shriek come from the darkness. That is what lies between you and the end cap on the other end of the aisle. Okay. Everybody kind of like stands up and they're on high alert. You see um, Ralph, just a big fat dust bunny. Yeah. He's got uh he's got gummy bear all over his mouth. <laughs> he's got a big chunk. He's got like a two or three big chunks taken out of him. Yeah. Okay. 
And he's just kind of, he's like, guys, he goes, they're coming. What is going on? Charlie stands up to you. He's like, the dust bunnies at the other end. Oh, no. They're coming. What do you mean? He kind of stands up. He goes, everybody on red alert. Everybody runs over. They all grab one of those cocktail swords. They're all holding one. I guess I grab one, too. You grab one, too. So we have to fight these guys You go to now? grab one. You go to grab one, and then you feel the bump of those brass knuckles from your pockets. Oh, right. You look at the sword. You go, not today. And you pull those brass knuckles out and you put them on. Okay. You kind of you kind of step towards the front of the line. And again, their little area is lit up by one matchstick. You can kind of see like light like coming in through the other end of the aisle. And uh you can kind of like make out through whatever light you see, just little tufts. And you know that you can't, it, it's like you can't hear footsteps, but you hear like something being pulled across the floor. Oh, man. right. Just like the steady ragging of something coming. So you, uh, you kind of like, you stand there at the edge of the light of the matchstick looking out into the darkness trying to adjust your eyes you can see something coming you can feel something coming you take a few steps back and you see just several other dust bunnies charging into the light oh, man. and you hear Charlie yell charge and he yells charge and all the all your dust bunnies go and they, they weren't expecting you to have swords and you guys just tear them to shreds Right, you're just stabbing the shit out of these dust bunnies. You're slugging them. They're just evaporating every time you hit them. Wow. And yet you hear that sound of something being dragged across the floor, coming closer, coming closer. At this point, you've taken out probably seven or eight dust bunnies. You feel like the tide is turning, and that that scratching and that dragging gets closer and closer. You look up, and through the light of a matchstick, you see just the biggest spider you've ever seen. Oh, it sees no. you and immediately uh, rears up and no, no. It, it bites your head. Why? Both of its fangs go into the back of your skull and it picks you up and it it can't get you out of its teeth. So it's oh. like shaking you and your body like it breaks your neck and pretty much immediately. And uh, it's just like trying to shake you loose from its fangs and it can't do it. Why so it just goes me? it just goes along and is like just demolishing it's it, i mean it's a spider it, it's just sweeping these things off their feet and they're just falling apart into the fucking they're just into the mist basically if you oh. were to stand and look outside of the end cap you would just see a flurry of dust flying out through that open slot where they took down the shelf and the spider just kills all of them yeah he, 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 it, 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 your body doesn't like ever actually fall off until it starts to like decay oh which man. takes like several days and by the time uh by the time like you get done with that, the dust bunnies that were there wind up like covering the inside of the store. They wind up filling up the entire store, and they uh, they essentially take it over. They uh, they go through yeah they they take oh, over no. the store with their numbers. They wind up using all the food there as fuel, and they just like come they just like expand and expand and expand, and eventually the building explodes. <laughs> the building explodes. Oh, and, that uh, many dust bunnies. They just kept they just kept going because of all the all the food there. You know, why they just, you just eventually. Tell, why didn't they tell me that it was a spider? I could have just killed it from outside. I was so much bigger than a spider. On I the don't outside. know. I don't know if the, I don't know if they knew about the spider. But he, once the building explodes, uh, no. there is there is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were they didn't leave their area. You know, how would they know? Jesus. So the building explodes and um, it makes the local news and everything. Right. Uh, and then they go to like clean up the wreckage and they find a. Uh, they find a back room kind of underneath the uh, produce department. And they find several bodies there. Wow. In business suits, nice shiny hats, and business cards in their pockets that they all say, self-checkout sales. 
and I never should. Your body's right there next to him. Yeah. 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 Damn those dust bunnies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they were we were good friends for a little while there, at least. That was cool. yeah, like a week. You get <laughs> yeah. And yeah, now you don't have to worry about anything because that spider beat your head off and you got stuck in its fangs. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. The spider was very inconvenient and did not survive the blast. So you can Good. revel in that, I guess. Yeah. But neither did you. <laughs>